On November 8th of 2020, I was finally able to make the drive down through New York City and experience one of the most unique theme parks I've ever been to, Nickelodeon Universe in the American Dream Mall. Now, this massive indoor park boasts five roller coasters, including the steepest in the world, and as expected, features some theming throughout based on different Nickelodeon characters and shows. So, what was the park like? Which coasters are the best? Stay tuned and let's dive in. So let's begin with how your day goes before we get into specifics. First things first, you park and you walk your way through the massive mall where you will also encounter an indoor ski slope, ice skating rink, and DreamWorks water park. Now once you scan in, you go through security and get a temperature check on the balcony and you get to take in the park in an awesome view. Now my group got there a bit before 11am which is when our tickets were set for, but they didn't start letting guests in until about 11.10 which is a bit odd. However, that was really the only complaint I had. We were able to ride almost everything in the park with minimal to no weight, and that is with every ride being sanitized between each and every cycle. Overall, the only major attraction we weren't able to ride was Slime Streak, the family coaster by Chance Rides, which was closed for maintenance that day. Other than that, every ride was operational, and to my knowledge, nothing else went down for the duration of the day. My group left feeling satisfied, even if we only got to spend four hours in the park. Going in, I was a bit worried the park might feel more like a county fair than a theme park, but I really couldn't have been more wrong. All the employees seemed to know exactly what they were doing when loading the trains, and the theming elements were fantastic. As you walk through the park, you'll find expertly made statues of Spongebob, Aang, and the Rugrats. At the top of the park's freefall tower, guests will rotate to get a full view of the New York City skyline and see a couple other hidden characters up top. On top of these awesome statues, every ride is built to reflect its theme. Some of the best are Aang's air gliders and the Rugrats' Reptar carousel. The only issues I really had with the park overall were the windows and a lack of food options at the time I went. First things first, the windows just make it really hot in some areas and they're pretty massive. They could just use a little bit of tint. Secondly, there was only one food stand open that was constantly busy throughout the day. Once this park is back up to capacity, this could be an issue. Moving to the ride collection, this park has an awesome selection of flat rides. As previously mentioned, Skyline Scream, the park's SNS rotating drop tower, and Aang's air gliders, the Zamperla Air Race, are fantastic, and add in Jimmy Neutron's Atom Smasher, which is a Chance Rides Unicoaster. This ride allows riders to control their vehicle's rotations front and back as it spins in a circle. You also have Krang Prime Pandemonium, which is a claw style ride that seems pretty intense and fun as well. That's not to mention the five other roller coasters in the park. Starting with most likely the least appealing coaster in the park, we have Slime Streak. Unfortunately, it was closed, but it seems like a short ride that's pretty simple and it's aimed at a younger audience. I will say though, throughout the park, it does look fantastic with that bright orange paint job. Next up is Timmy's Half Pipe Havoc, which is an intimate surf rider model. Obviously, this is themed to the fairly odd parents with Cosmo and Wanda sides of a skateboard that spin as riders are launched up each spike. Now, these launches feel pretty strong, but overall this ride kind of feels more like a flat ride to me, more than a coaster, but either way, it's still great, especially for its small footprint. Now, the third best coaster in the park belongs to the Gerstlauer Spinning Coaster Shredder. The spinning is a bit mild, but the layout feels extremely long, especially for a spinning coaster. Now, the way this wraps in and around TMNT Shell Razor simply adds to the fun. There are a few dives towards the end of the layout that feel pretty forceful with the center facing cars. An excellent stepping stone for younger guests who are intimidated by the two other rides. Overall, it's my second favorite spinning coaster just behind Laugh Tracks at Hershey. Simply because Laugh Track has a few more elements that feel a bit more wild and it has that darkness factor. Now, launching into the number two spot, haha, is a ride I was pretty hyped for going in and that's Sandy's Blasting Bronco. This intimate multi-launch shuttle coaster shoots riders around a pretzel looking layout forwards before a turnstile spins the track and repeats the ride backwards. Now, the minuscule launch length makes this one of the strongest and most intense launches I've ever experienced. This has the best launch in the park, and you get to experience it two different ways, which is really cool. Now, the rest of the layout is fine. It reminds me of a Skyrocket 2 with a bit more variety, but similar levels of hang time and whip in certain areas. The one and pretty big negative for me at least was with this ride, I had a violent vibration throughout the duration. It felt like the trains were loose or something. It wasn't really rough per se, but it felt like wearing the wind-up chatter teeth as dentures. 
Now, I've heard plenty of people who've had this issue and who also haven't had the same experience. So my guess is it might be one of the trains has this issue and one of the other ones doesn't. However, besides that issue, this ride still sits well with me. And it's well above the Impulse models by Intamin and Skyrocket 2s. But it still feels a bit like a one-trick pony for me, and it falls short due to that rattle and vibration. Finally, we have the crown jewel of the park and the steepest roller coaster in the world, the Gerstauer Eurofighter TMNT Shell Razor. Now, the 7 Inversion, launched almost exact clone of Takabisha, is absolutely fantastic. I have a video deep diving into this coaster up on my channel already if you want more details, but I'll summarize it here quickly. The ride's launch is extremely strong and it hits hard. It's also extremely smooth, unlike a lot of this ride. This ride suffers from rough patches, some potholes, and a lot of sway. Still, even with the roughness, the inversions give some absolutely great hang time or whip depending which one you're on, and the long layout feels like two whole rides. Paired with an airtime filled drop and a few other surprises throughout, and you have a top 20 coaster for me. Actually, it's exactly 20. The main highlight for this ride really is the launch, the drop, and the banana roll. All of which stand out and suck with me after riding a couple times. However, this coaster really isn't easily marathoned, so be warned. After two rides, I got off with a bit of a headache. So, to wrap things up, Nickelodeon Universe is a solid quality park with plenty to do for all ages. The rides are all great and warrant re-rides. It could use some more food areas for sure, but it's definitely worth a visit for any coaster enthusiast, at least once. The price tag is a bit high, especially for only 4 hours in the park, but it's far and away the best local option. So what have you guys thought of this new theme park if you visited? If you haven't gone yet, do you plan on making any trips to come out? Let me know below. As always, look for Island Coasters on Instagram for daily content and video updates. And if you want to support the channel, drop a like or subscribe. It really makes a big difference. So till next time, that's all from the shores of Island Coasters.